Welcome to Love for the Truth Radio, a program devoted to encouraging you to be a contender of the faith in an ever-changing church culture. On Love for the Truth Radio, we will discuss current issues and challenging views along with biblical truth that can affect our Christian worldview and how we live out our faith. And now, here's your host, Cindy Hartline. Welcome to Love for the Truth. You know, well, we have an exciting show for you today. Actually, a different kind of show. One that I pray encourages you in your ministry or inspires you to find, determine, or realize the assignment that God has for you. Our guest, Ken Berg, relates to his ministry as, quote, media pulpit a national ministry designed by God, unquote. Is your work your pulpit? Is your ministry designed by God? Or are you trying to create one by your own efforts? You know, we all have a tendency to miss the mark. I mean, even the father of our faith, Abraham, had Ishmael through Hagar. In time, he and Sarah did have Isaac, the lineage according to God's plan. Whether we have to wait on God or he unctions us through the Holy Spirit to move quickly, I believe God is going to take his people, meaning those who have accepted his son Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, to higher heights. Whether it be in new career positions, new inspired works, new relationships, new arenas, ministry changes, whatever. I know you will be encouraged by producer Ken Berg's story and testimony. Just for a quick background, Ken has traveled extensively throughout the Holy Land and the Middle East for over four decades, producing award-winning television programs based on the Bible. His studies and degree in fine arts serve as a background to his creative eye. Ken was raised as a minister's son in New York City after serving in the motion picture division of the U.S. Army. He moved to California where he worked in Hollywood for a Christian advertising agency. He has gleaned experience as a director, producer, writer, graphic artist, and photographer in places such as New York, Hollywood, California, Europe, as well as throughout the Middle East. Berg Productions has produced, quote, Our Jewish Roots, our unquote, formerly Zola Levitt Presents, for 45 years. The program airs weekly on the Daystar Television Network and more than 100 independent television stations. Ken's company has also produced, quote, The Nazareth Jesus New, unquote, featuring Pat Boone, and musical specials featuring Dino Kartsanakis and Dallas Home. His recent projects include, quote, much like Peter, unquote, shot on location at the Sea of Galilee, Sons of Promise, Ruth, and dozens of others, all filmed on location in Israel. Ken Berg's full-service production company, located in the heart of Dallas-Fort Worth area, has a reputation for quality and consistency in both long-form and short-form in film, video, and high-definition productions. Ken's photos have been featured in U.S. Cameron Travel Magazine. He has garnered over 30 awards for his work in television and film. Ken has a wealth of experience and notoriety in the media film, but he also has an interesting upbringing that he is willing to share with us today. Welcome, Kenneth Berg. It's a pleasure to have you with us on Love for the Truth Radio. Well, thank you, Cindy. Boy, I hope I can live up to that <laughs> length of introduction. My goodness, it covered a lot. Yeah, and, you know, I could I could take it much further, but y- yeah, you got the heart of of my heart, I think, and uh, how God has blessed me these many years to have directed my my footsteps on a path which I had no idea what it was when I started way back in school in New York. Mm-hmm. You know, leading me to the Army and the Motion Picture Division, then to Hollywood and. Then eventually down here to to Dallas, um, which we can explore further. I don't know where you want me to, to go next with this. Well, you know, I'll tell you, we all had to take a deep breath because there's a lot there. You put your hand to a lot of work, and uh, I know that many people have been blessed. But if you can, if you can paint a broad picture of your production experiences for our listeners, that would be great. Uh, basically, your production topics, so your traveling <clears throat> experience, people connections, God moments. Anything to give a broad picture of what you and your production company is about? Sure. Well, growing up as a minister's son, as I did in New York City, um, 
surrounded by family members, and we'll get into that a little bit later, I guess, as to my perception that the Lord really had something special for me. And I had an interest in art, so I went to an art school in New York City, where I began to find interest in, especially in, in motion picture and television, which was part of the media course I was taking. And little did I realize that it would eventually become my life. <laughs> I mm. live um, at my office as I am now, I, you know, seven days a week, because I love doing... I never say I'm going to work. Mm. I say I'm going to my office. <laughs> yeah. uh, because I do really feel that the Lord has directed my, my steps, and so here I am. So getting back to then after uh, being in school, I went into the Army. This is during uh, Vietnam. I wound up going to Korea, where I was for a year, and um, then back to the States. I was in the motion picture division, where I got further training besides kind of the artsy background that I had while I was in school, reference to film and television. Mm. Yeah, I wound up in, in California after my Army time. Did some freelance work out there and began to hook up with David Wilkerson, awesome. who I had known um, earlier in my childhood in New York, because that's where David um, really began his ministry in the streets of New York and Brooklyn. So um, <clears throat> knowing Dave as I did um, some years ago, he, I began to do some work with him. He said, Ken, why don't you join my team? We're going down to Dallas. And uh, at first I said, no, I, I like California. I lived in Newport Beach. Oh, boy. Thank you, any, thank you anyway. <laughs> he says, well, well, we'll pray about it, Ken. So mm -hmm. begrudgingly, I did pray about it. And uh, don't you know, within no time, I said, yes, Dave, I'm, I'm ready to go. So, and that was many years ago, and here I am in Dallas. Um, yeah. But he was the one who brought me down here. And uh, yeah, I produced a number of films for Dave while we were here. In Dallas, following up um, many of his books that he wrote, uh, one being of the vision, and he did a film called uh, The Road to Armageddon. And uh, Dave was always on kind of the cutting edge of the prophetic um, yes. messages that he would give across the country or even the films that we did. So um, that, to answer your question, I guess, in terms of connections and God moments was certainly a a God thing in my life to, to bring me down here to Dallas to, to do what I'm doing now. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I know we're Newport Beaches either, and it's really nice. Very nice, <laughs> yeah. very nice. It would have it's, to be a God thing to get you out of that place. Yeah, I mean, there's virtually no <laughs> beaches here in Dallas. Uh, there <laughs> no. is some water, but it's not as clean, certainly, as, as, the, as the ocean. Uh, no sandy beaches, but... Um, Again, God's got me here, and that's uh, all I need. Yeah, and isn't that interesting? You know, you said you just go to your office. Well, you know, when you love to, yeah. when you love your work, it's because God designed it, and that's what exactly. you were designed for. And that's yeah. what I want to encourage, you know, our listeners, is that, you know, when you're doing God's work, you know, it's not hard. It's because it's a love, and it's exactly where you're supposed to be. You know, I want mm -hmm. you to share, you know, something about your uh, or info about your productions and, you know, how and where our audience can view them. I know when I found you, Ken, it was because I was going through Facebook and I saw uh, some video on Ruth, or I saw, uh, I think it was a poster, and I kind of followed it, and I ended up somewhere <laughs> looking at your videos on Ruth, and they, they were excellent. And uh, that's what captivated me. So if you can share some of that with our audience, sure. be great. So I produced a program called Our Jewish Roots, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, for the most part, the last number of years, we have included reenactments of various um, key players in God's direction for what he wanted in, in his healing of redemption. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruth certainly was part of them, but we've, you know, we've done Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all of these over the years, mm -hmm. uh, Ruth happened to be the one that you saw. I think the one I put off on Facebook. And it, in fact, it turned out to be one of my favorites also. Um, we've always strived for authenticity. I have. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? That a la the, 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 the title, Our Jewish Roots, it's to remind, for the most part, Christians, the church, that it all started in Israel. Mm -hmm. That Jesus was Jewish. The disciples were Jewish. The prophets, all the, the godly men that we read of in the Bible were Jewish. They never converted to anything. Yes, they, they all became believers in Jesus, but they were still Jews. 
So what we try to do in, in our program is, to that end, um, shoot it on location in Israel. It's not shot by some lovely lake that's supposedly the Sea of Galilee here in, in Dallas or in Utah or wherever. Mm-hmm. And we shoot by the Sea of Galilee. We shoot in the mountains. Uh, and we ha- hire actors who speak in Hebrew. Oh, amazing. Um, so it's just, again, t- a reminder that this is the language of the Lord. You know, that the, 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 this is what this is how they sounded. This is what they looked like. They didn't. Jesus didn't have blue eyes and blonde eye and blonde hair. No, <laughs> that yeah. he looked very Jewish. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is an eye opener in itself, in a way, for many people because they said, "Well, you know, I thought quite on contrary. That's not the pictures I see of Jesus in the books." So um, yeah, that's our, been our main thrust: is authenticity where we can. We still have studio segments in the program, which we do here in, in the Dallas area. Mm-hmm. But the actual Bible teaching is done in Israel on location where it happened. I love it. I so love the it. program can be seen. Our Jewish roots can be seen on the Daystar Network mm-hmm. uh, twice a week on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Central and Fridays at 5 p.m. Central. You mm-hmm. can also see the program on Levitt. L e v i t t dot tv on YouTube, or or on YouTube. Yeah, so it's, you've got three choices really there: Levitt dot tv, mm-hmm. or go to YouTube and Our Jewish Roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting back to the Levitt, where'd that come from? Well, I started with Zola Levitt here in Dallas many many years ago, forty five years ago, and um, he was one of the first to ever. Um, in my eyes, uh, bring me a knowledge of my own Jewish roots. Being raised as a minister's son, I certainly knew uh, the story of the New Testament. I didn't totally understand the fulfillment of Jesus as given in the feast, for instance, in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So it's been one learning curve for me. I've still continued to learn and and appreciate um you know, what God has given to us by way of proof in the land and the people that I meet with um, when I go there and about to go for my trip, uh, 76th trip next you know, two weeks. Oh my goodness, 76th 76 times to, to Israel. And it's become like a home to me, and um, it's really an honor and such a pleasure to be there among the people that uh, God loves. Uh, that's so, so exciting, you know, and I think this is so important because we in America need to see uh, Jesus as being Jewish, okay, and yes, the Bible right. as a Jewish book because yes. otherwise we paganize it. Right. And I, I think yes. we miss, I think we miss so much. I, I, yeah. uh, I'm writing a book on the, the prophesied bride of Christ right now, and it's all about the ancient Jewish wedding and the covenant mm-hmm. and everything yeah. that Jesus yeah. came to fulfill in us, through yeah. us, I mean, yeah. to us, you know. So anyway. Yeah, Zola Levitt, excuse me, Zola Levitt yes. was one of the first to bring out that analogy, not okay. analogy, but the, of, of, the, of the Jewish wedding. Yes. Yes. We did a, a musical called Beloved Thief, in which we we uh, dramatized that story in a, in a musical form, mm. and it was long before anybody was talking about it. Mm-hmm. Zola was cutting edge in terms of anything mm-hmm. that uh, w- would speak to uh, Jesus in the Old Testament in, in so many ways. Yes, so. and I and I I realized that too when you told me you worked for uh, Zola. I was so excited. Anyway, we're going on a break already. My goodness, all All the information. Yeah. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back with Kenneth Berg. Don't want to miss it. If you're a first-time listener, you'll find that on Love for the Truth Radio, we discuss news and views from a biblical worldview. We believe that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God and the absolute truth that should be applied to every aspect of life. We don't proclaim to have a cap on the truth, but we do have a love for biblical truth. So please, take everything you hear on this radio program to study and prayer, And thank you for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. 
Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, host of Love for the Truth Radio and Podcast. If you like the show, please subscribe and hit that bell so we can inform you when another show is posted. Check out our website, lovefortheTruthRadio.com. That's lovefortheTruthRadio.com, and there you will find the current on-air show, as well as seven years of archives by topic. Our program airs on a plethora of radio websites. You'll find us there if you look us up on Google, and you may want to check out Cornerstone in the UK, one of our biggest shows there. Ken, I, you know, I was really impressed by your upbringing and your experiences that I believe have molded you for your calling. I told you that. The assignment God had for you all along, and it goes way back to your grandfather. Um, you had mentioned that your grandfather knew Billy Graham. What kind of relationship did he have with him? Well, honestly, I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't there when it happened, mm-hmm. but um, the, the stories that I'm hearing mainly from my father was that um, I knew that my grandfather had a Sunday school class in Charlotte, North Carolina, mm-hmm. where it happened that Billy Graham was also raised. And um, Billy Graham, when, on occasion, mm-hmm. would attend my grandfather's Sunday school class. It wasn't mm-hmm. every Sunday, as, I, as I'm told, mm-hmm. but on occasion he would drop in. And, of course, nobody knew who he was. He wasn't a big-time evangelist at the time, but mm-hmm. just somebody who was visiting who seemed to apparently had a, a thirst for the Word and... My goodness, um, that thirst certainly <laughs> brought the world, uh, changed the world in many ways, didn't it? Yes, it did. It just, it just seems like you have such a history, you know, as far as uh, the Lord uh, in your family working through many of your, uh, you know, your, I guess, siblings and your, your sisters. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a right. minute. But you also yeah. grew up in New York, and you said before even that your dad was a pastor who worked with David mm-hmm. Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz. You, you mentioned that in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. let, let's talk about that just a little more. Elaborate on that. Yeah, uh, the, the best I can recall was that uh, David came from Pennsylvania as a country preacher, thirst for the Lord, and mm-hmm. was totally convinced that he had a a ministry to do on the streets of New York. Nobody else was doing it at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those who have read uh, or are aware of the cross and the switchblade, it tells a story of of David, um, y- yes, in his bold <laughs> ignorance, mm-hmm. would go through the streets of Brooklyn mm-hmm. and encounter <laughs> gangs, you know, one-on-one to include people like Nicky Cruz yes. and, sh- and, sh- and um Cookie Rodriguez, I've done films for her on about her life. I never did one on Nikki Cruz. But nevertheless, Nick, uh, David Wilkerson would come to my father's church where he got much of his initial support financially uh, and otherwise to to uh, begin the ministry that he did in, in the streets of New York. Oh, that's awesome. And David would uh, speak at the church occasionally, as would Nikki Cruz, would come occasionally and tell his incredible stories of of uh, his involvement with the gangs and how that had changed uh, through his encounter with with the Lord. It was, for us kids, you know, as young as we were, it was so eye-opening, so different than anything else that we had ever heard. At my dad's church being in New York, missionaries would come and go from around the world and tell their stories of what happened in Africa or whatever, Mm. but never had anybody within the streets of New York, our own backyard neighborhood, in a way, although we church was in Manhattan, uh, <clears throat> David and Nikki were in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, but still, we, you know, we knew that uh, there were wars, gang wars that would go on, and all the drugs that were being um, distributed at the time, and to hear somebody who was in the middle of that was <laughs> earth-shaking, earth-shaking for us kids. I bet. So <laughs> it, it really opened up our eyes as to what the Lord could do when, when, when we give Him the chance. That now see right there, that's a bingo. That's awesome. You know, for a young child to see that. And yeah. you know, because you can go on through your life knowing that God can change any circumstance and you can have greater exactly. even greater faith in that. I think that's so, so, yeah. so exciting. Yeah. Now I know that uh you know, you were talking about Teen Challenge, which right now we know are all over the globe, you know, uh, as far as helping addicts recover. Uh, through Teen Challenge, uh, what you said your dad was on the board for Teen Challenge. Yeah, yeah he was. He was chairman of the board mm-hmm. in New York City, mm-hmm. uh, the first and only Teen Challenge at the time. Of course, like you say, it's gone around the world. Yes. Since then, and uh, <clears throat> I can remember Dad going to many meetings and kind of putting together um, 
the organization that Dave needed to to do what he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I never really got involved with any of the teen challenges. However, when I went to school, I went to uh, college in New York City. It was in Brooklyn. It wasn't terribly far from the original teen challenge. So um, anyway, yeah, the, the Lord is so blessed what he has done, uh, what, what Dave did and with my father's help um, through these many years and reaching so many drug addicts. Yes. Um, um, you know, we think it's bad now, but back then it was all c- kind of new. Nobody knew how to deal with this this drug situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Dave said, yes, it can be dealt with through the Lord's help. And, and yeah, he would boldly just uh, speak to deliverance that the Lord could do through the Holy Spirit on people's lives, and sure enough, it happened. Yeah, amen to that. Wow, and, and to even know, to see that or witness that is amazing, too. You know, growing up, you know, what's interesting is I was going through, you know, a little bit of research, and I found a uh, something on David Wilkerson saying that your dad was the one that actually started Teen Challenge and that he should get the credit. And you know, I'm so mad at myself because I pulled it up. I wanted to have that quote for the show, and then I, I lost it. <laughs> I didn't have time. I would have had it gotten through my history, and I probably could find it. But I was, I just thought that maybe you knew that, and uh, that he actually said that your dad should have gotten the credit rather than him. That's what he said in his quote. So I thought that was interesting. Well, Dad was very humble in his own way. He may have mm-hmm. used those words to me, and I don't recall them exactly. Mm-hmm. But I, like I said, I knew that he was very involved. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, as I just I look back, it's just another one of the pieces of the, pu- the puzzle that the Lord has put together in my own life. My heritage, as I was sharing with my mm-hmm. with my daughter and grandkids just a week or so ago, when we were all together, that. Um, Speaking to my grandkids, like, you guys have got a tremendous heritage in your bloodstream, your DNA. Um, <laughs> yeah, because look what's happened with Grandpa and your, your dad, and now God's, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're part of that lineage. Now. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so awesome, you know, to, to pass that down. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and just to see what you're able to do with that. You know, is amazing. You did mention in the beginning that you were part of David Wilkerson's ministry um, down in Dallas. That's what kind of brought you down to that area. But did you would like would you like to add anything that you've done extensively for David Wilkerson that we didn't mention before? Well, I, no. I, when I was in California, I, I did some freelance uh, work mm-hmm. for him as mm-hmm. photographer and uh, some graphics and the like. Because again, they've been my Little, my background in, in New York was mm-hmm. in, in art and graphics and the like. I hadn't really pursued the film thing all that much with him in California, but it's when I came down to Dallas, where I am now, where he brought me down here, where we began to shoot some film. I did probably three or four films with him. One that comes to mind right now is one called uh, The Road to Armageddon, hmm. where he, um, you know, this goes back 40s, eight years ago, <laughs> wow. um, spoke to what was happening in the country. We didn't go to Israel, um, but you know the things that were happening in the country and around the world that we stock footage of wars of being breaking out and, and, and the drugs and so forth and so on, that it in many ways was part of the direction that the world and our country was headed mm-hmm. towards Armageddon. And why does this come into mind, in mind at all? Because I just had a meeting half an hour ago with my crew with reference to our going to Israel in a couple of weeks, wherein we will be shooting a series called The Roadmap to Armageddon. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's kind of taken full circle. Um, mm. In this case, we will be in Israel. We'll go to Megiddo, you know, where the battle will be fought and so forth. Mm. We'll be taking a Jeep across country. So it'll be kind of a um, little more of a virality based program where people will see this Jeep journey going to various places throughout the country that many places have not been really been covered on film. So we're kind of excited about that. That is very exciting. And to think that God yeah. chose you to do this assignment, that's really amazing. Um, yeah. You know, your, your dad was a pastor. Your mom was a praying woman, you said. You had three sisters who all married pastors. <laughs> you also mm-hmm. had other family yeah. member who were members who were missionaries. Yeah. Um, and again, I mean, we keep saying that I believe God has molded you for what you're doing today. Um, you did say that media was your pulpit. Uh, so do, do you believe that your family and experience have played a, a part in grooming you for your high calling? 
Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Big time. Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, absolutely. Um, you know, mother married, uh, um, or uh, mother had three sisters. They all married ministers. Mm-hmm. So I have had in my family aunts and uncles who were missionaries in Japan and Africa and cousins who did the oh, same goodness. thing. So mm-hmm. a, a great deal of them, I don't know what percentage, did wind up um, behind the pulpit in many ways or uh, out on the field, in the missions field. Unlike myself, where media, I guess, is like you say, become my pulpit. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've accepted it. It's not been an easy road necessarily, nor has it been for any missionary for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, you really have to feel like the Lord's called you. And I, I think everybody has a calling on their life. They just need to find out what it is and pursue it. You mm-hmm. know, don't wait for some big eureka moment necessarily. You know, the God can mm-hmm. speak to your heart. Mm-hmm. and direct you accordingly. Yeah, amen to that, because everybody, I, I find that a lot of young people today think that they have to go back and get a certification, or they have to go back to school right. to learn. And I'm say, I, I keep saying, you know, God has something for you, and yeah. you may not have to go back to school. You know, no, uh, and yeah, and you know, like you, you, I mean, in our business alone, I don't know about yours, but we, a lot of people that we hire, uh, we train. You know, yeah. they just have yeah. to be willing vessels that that love what we do, and yeah. and train them. Yeah, I mean the disciples, those who the the Lord chose, weren't certainly learned necessarily. That's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah. the Lord used used them, and mm-hmm. and they wound up being you know the spokesman for the, our faith today. That that is that is so, such a good. You know, I might I might go back a little bit more to the family because I have to yeah. bring out one issue with 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 my mother. Okay. Dad yeah. was at the church so much, so it was a great deal of that my mother's upbringing, mm-hmm. um, myself, my brother, and my sister. <clears throat> and um, I can remember to this day, my mother closing her bedroom door and getting on her knees mm. and praying mm. every single day. Wow. And, you know, my brother, my sister, and myself always knew when that door was closed, she was on her knees. That's interesting. And to this day, you know, I, I can still feel those prayers. I can still feel mm. that the time that she put in has, has in, in some way created a path for me where I'm walking today. Is that interesting? Well, you know what? We are going on another break. It's perfect timing. So please stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. We'll be highlighting uh, his work. So the media that became the pulpit. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Many would agree that we are living in unprecedented times. Grave immorality is on the rise, as in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There are wars and rumors of wars as nations rise against nations. Prophecy is being fulfilled as the birth pangs become quicker and harder. These are the signs of the return of Jesus Christ. There is one sign often left untaught. Jesus also told the disciples in the Olivet Discourse to take heed that no man deceive you. This warning applies to us too. Deception has infiltrated the churches through many false teachings and movements making apostasy paramount. As contenders of the faith, we do our best to research and discuss these false teachings for you, the listener. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, your host. Our guest today is Kenneth Berg of Berg Production, who says, quote, the media became his pulpit, unquote. Check out Ken's beautiful posters and videos at bergproductions.com. I'm sure he has a lot more to view there. That's bergproductions.com. You know, Ken, we had four previous shows on Love for the Truth that highlighted Jesus' movement and the influence it had on our interviewees who were a pertinent part of it. I thought it was interesting to discover that you, too, were part of the Jesus movement as well. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that and and how it influenced you. Yeah, as you know, it's all, it it was birthed in in California, Southern California, where I lived. Mm -hmm. I lived in Newport Beach. I would occasionally go to to the church there, and Mm -hmm. um, you'd mentioned that Chuck Gerard had been on, and Love Song became my favorite group oh, out there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, you know, looking back, I can't really give details as to why that was the case. 
mm-hmm. other than the fact that it was such a new sound and so real. I mean, they weren't dressed in choir robes, maybe in like yeah. what I was maybe familiar with, which, which was supposed to happen in, in church. It was all all very down to earth. And, you know, just spoke so much to the heart. I can still hear that one song, Welcome Now to a Love Song. Oh, that's <laughs> out of, awesome. Out of key. Out of key. But, um, yeah, it, it was a love song that love song sang, you know, it's yeah. to the Lord. And um, anyway, that's, um, I, I, I can't say I was terribly involved uh, aggressively in the moment. I, mm-hmm. I do remember. I was involved with Arthur Blessed. I don't know if you know oh, that name or yes, anybody else. Oh, yes, he carried would. the cross around the world, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so when I was in Hollywood, uh, we covered uh, what he was doing uh, production-wise to include uh, a time when he chained himself to a a flag po- to a, a, a telephone pole, I believe it was, on Sunset Strip right opposite where our officer was. And as a demonstration to the media and so forth, that the club that he was right in front of would not let him in to speak. Hmm. So um, uh, it happened that eventually his secretary became became my wife. I wound up getting married because I was so impressed by her caring and love for for Arthur Blessed. But he would have all through Hollywood. You see these little round stickers that were on telephone poles, and everybody was was posting things all around Hollywood at the time uh, said something about Jesus loves you or something like bright red magenta mm. colors. <laughs> and, you know, and, and kids were becoming aware for the first time there was something else out there to, uh, to, to, to bring life. You know, the, the drugs were gave life to them for a few hours and then it was they're dead the next day. Yeah. So here's a life that's permanent. And, um, so that was kind of a quick overview, I guess, of my experience in the, quote, movement at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, Love Song's doing a movie right now. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're working oh. on it, and they were, and it's funny oh. because they did not, they wanted it to go out, I think, last year before the Jesus, they didn't even know when the Jesus <laughs> movement was coming out. So they thought, isn't that interesting? Oh, You know, yeah. the Jesus movement came out, <clears throat> and then here people know who Love Song is, and now yeah. they'll, they'll be out with their movie. So I'm mm-hmm. not sure what, what t- I don't know if it's going to be in a way of a documentary or a real full-blown movie, okay. but they are working on it right now. And I'll have wow. Chuck back to talk about that. He's very, okay. very busy right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. very, very busy. So, you know, like every time I talk to you, Ken, there's like another production that you did. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like you said you did just something for Arthur Blessed. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I can't imagine how many... Uh, productions you have done you're so talented you know um what can i ask you what is your favorite production <laughs> out of all of them if well, you have but, one you know not that i have many children but if i were to say that this was my favorite child <laughs> the okay. others would wonder why what's happened to me and, and in some ways i have given birth in, in my own way i guess to a lot of these productions from writing scripts or whatever and all the way through so mm-hmm. i can't pinpoint one i guess that there are a couple that come to mind where things just seem to come together so beautifully. You alluded to the series we did called Ruth, uh, Your People Should Be My People, mm-hmm. <clears throat> in which we sto- told the story, a beautiful love story between Ruth and Boaz and mm-hmm. Naomi and the like. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I did His Last Days, a program with Dallas Home, mm-hmm. built around the song Rise Again. We shot that in Israel did a series with Pat Boone, the uh, Nazareth, Jesus Snoop, both of those are really special. One more recent one that we did called Much Like Peter, where on the Sea of Galilee, um, uh, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, we shot um, a series about Peter and his brother Andrew, Mm. wherein they talk about their encounters with the Lord on that given day. Um, be it Peter walking on the water or Andrew, you know, what's it like walking on water? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and things like that. Again, uh, this is all in, in Hebrew. They're speaking in, in Hebrew mm-hmm. with uh, English uh, text. Yeah. Um, so that you can read, understand what they're saying. Uh, again, on the actual shore. So, I mean, literally, we're shooting a scene on the very rocks that Jesus and the disciples may have walked on. That's so amazing. And that in itself is so very moving. You know, to be able to have that opportunity and honor to mm-hmm. be in in the land where it all took place and to kind of retell that story. 
Oh, so gosh. those are the ones. Those are the ones that kind of pop into mind right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many, and I and like you said, they're like your children here. You know, God inspires. You know, when He births it in, doesn't He? He inspires he us and he yeah. bur- births the idea in or whatever yeah. that we have. And you know what? I want to say again to our listeners is that everyone has a pulpit. Everyone. No matter what you do, it doesn't matter the career, the job, the ministry. If you're a woman at home with your children, you know, you could be the virtuous woman. Everyone has a pulpit. And, you know, we don't need certifications all the time. You don't need to go to school. You just need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and follow his directions and instructions to the assignment that he has planned for you. And 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 guess what? He's already molded you and he's already given you all the gifts that you need. You know, he'll he will uh, give you everything you need for the assignment that he's calling you to. And and we learn by experience, don't we? Ken there's a lot of experience. Yeah, we do. You know, in, in this business that I'm in, there are mm-hmm. various titles for producers. There's executive producer mm-hmm. and there's online producers. All of them are important roles to be played, the director and so forth. I Sometimes I'm all of those because of our limited budget. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> what I'm getting at here is that the executive producer is the main one who oversees the whole project. And I think everybody in their own lives ha- have an executive producer, namely the Lord, Mm -hmm. who um, he's up there. He's not dictating. This is the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. He puts pieces together, as does an executive producer on a a film. He he brings events into our lives and moments in our lives. And and then we say, well, what good is that going to be in my life? (laughs) Only to be able to look back later, say, yeah, you know, sure enough, you know, if I'd done this, this wouldn't have happened if I'd done that. Well, executive producer is in control of it all, the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I love that. That's really exciting. And and, and you, I, I'm looking at all of your towns, it seems like you've played every part there, there was. You know, I was thinking about that the other day. I don't know. I'm just going to throw this in there. Is that how, you know, God gives us many gifts. We look at Ephesians 4. He gives us gifts, gave gifts to men. As soon as he ascended on high and sat on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, he gave gifts to men because he knew that we were going to need the gifts to build the foundation or build the church where she laid the foundation as a cornerstone. But if everyone would just know what their gift is, what God called them to do, we could all work together, you know? And I, I don't right. know. I just right. I just see a community like that. I see a church like that. I even talk to my family. I see our family like that. You know, whether mm. you're in a Bible study or whatever, whatever you're doing, everyone has a part to play in that piece of that puzzle Mm -hmm. a piece of that puzzle so i mean that's how i see it is that right (laughs) that's right yeah and when we think they're most important that we're the most important piece and you put it next to a big puzzle and you stand back you can't even find yourself you're just one of one of thousands of other pieces that make up this picture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Like, I'm the most important piece in the puzzle. Well, you stand back and you can't even see that piece. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love that. That's really good. Well, you know what? The, like you said, the most important piece of the puzzle is our executive <laughs> producer, and that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's why we just have to submit to his will and his way, you know, <clears throat> and he will, you know, and I, I really believe this. You know, I don't know why, but God has always <clears throat> put me in all the ministries we've been a part of, always put me in the place of recognizing someone's gift you know mm. and talent you know i yeah. I, I taught a lot yeah. of, I, I was in the whole acting field and teaching dance and teaching all of that kind of things i've always yeah. saw the talent in people and tried to encourage them in that talent whatever it was whether it was playing an instrument dancing singing whatever it was yeah. or even teaching you know any of those gifts so you know I, look at your grandkids i'm talking to the the audience out there you know your grandkids your children encourage them in the gift that you see you know, encourage them the gift that, that you see that God has given them that gift. And everyone is different. You know, everyone has a place. Everyone is a piece of a big puzzle. So I, I thought that maybe, you know, I know we spoke briefly before the show uh, on so many things. There's so many things that you could share. But I was wondering if there was something else that you'd like to share with the audience that you didn't share yet. Uh, wow. Where do we start? Um I, I, I think we made reference to another project that I'm trying to get off the board mm-hmm. called Kids of the Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Um, your program having so much to do with the truth, at least by title, and I don't, I've not honestly listened to that many of your programs, but mm-hmm. I, I, my 
I'm so saddened by what I see with happened mm. in our educational system, especially yes. with our kids today, um, where mom and dad tell them one thing, you know, about what truth is. They go to school and they find out, no, that's not necessarily the truth. Mm. Gender identity can say, well, you know, okay, you, you're told you're a boy, but you really can be a girl if you want, whatever, mm -hmm. you know yeah. where I'm going with this. And, um, and so they come home, and, and they may even get the truth in, in Sunday school or church, but they, they come home and say, well, what is truth after all? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. you're telling me one thing, Mom and Dad, I'm going to school, and my friends are telling me something else. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do with this program, which the idea is to take four kids and their families across um, Israel, where they encounter the places in the Bible that they have read uh, about uh, and places like where David fought Goliath and so forth, mm -hmm. show them that there really is a valley where that took place, and they really mm -hmm. can find stones, just like David did. And that um, all of this will be background to their understanding, perhaps, that there is a truth that has been just that for thousands of years. Yes. It hasn't changed overnight. Mm -hmm. Truth is truth. Bible truth is, is, is not going to change, despite what you might learn in school or from your friends on social media and so forth that uh, the, the Bible didn't just come up with these these places or these names. They really did exist. There really is truth. Amen. So um, th that's kind of the the idea that I have that is still floating around as to how to make it really work. Yeah. But um, yeah, we've had some good meeting, good conversations with with people. Everybody thinks it's such a timely project to be mm -hmm. able to. Um, to tell the kids of the kingdom, uh, those who really have some kind of interest in the Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we read that men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, without self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. They will be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, your host. We've had an amazing show, a different kind of show, uh, with Ken Berg. He has shared with us a wealth of information about his media pulpit, and we've been talking also about how you also have a pulpit, and we pray that you find what that pulpit is, whatever type of job you have, career, uh, ministry, whatever it is, uh, we believe everyone has a pulpit to shine their light for Jesus to uh, take on the uh, the fruit of the Spirit, and to, hey, you may be the only Jesus that, that someone knows uh, sitting next to you, a worker or whatever. You might be the only Jesus to them. So anyway, we are back with Kenneth Berg. I am still taken aback by all that he's done, um, you know, for his ministry, as far as all of the productions. And, uh, I, you know, Ken, I want you to tell us about your new series that will debut this fall. I believe it's called Dateline Jerusalem, uh, The Coming Temple. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be interested, I'm mean, sure, in a lot of your videos, but this is really interesting because we know that when the last temple is built, this is really the end of the end of the age here. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. When mm -hmm. we see the Jewish people are getting ready, mm -hmm. prepared for what they know has to be done, ultimately is the building of another temple. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the way this is kind of birthed was in our previous series we did in last year, and I can't even remember the name of it. I've done thousands of shows. Oh, I bet time. you have, yeah. But uh, we, we documented the, the, um, the selection by rabbinical people who came, who came from Israel all the way over here to to inspect at the the red heifers which have been found on a ranch nearby here in the Dallas. Mm. The ashes of the red heifer, which maybe some of your listeners are familiar with, somehow ties in with the end times. And it does, in fact, because the ashes are needed to cleanse those that are involved in the building of the temple. Mm. So that's it's an important stage that, that they find the heifers whereby the ashes thereof can be used for the cleansing purposes. So when we 
aired this program, the finding of these heifers over a year ago, there was such response that it said, well, let's let's follow up on this. So mm-hmm. sure, that's what we did. The uh, five heifers were chosen from Texas. They were sent to uh, to Israel, and we documented the, their arrival and the preparations that are now being made, not only for the heifers, but we took it much further, of course, in terms of how the implements within the temple are being prepared and the, how the priests are being prepared. Mm-hmm. And there's a readying and an awareness in Jerusalem for temple talk that hasn't been around for, for oh. a long time. Mm-hmm. So that's so encouraging to see that uh, God is preparing the hearts of those who aren't necessarily believers, as we know them, Christian believers, but somehow they're fitting into God's plan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean to that. Boy, that is so exciting to be a part of that. I mean, we've heard about these heifers, you know, coming out of Texas, which is very interesting, right? Yeah. Um, right. And and I did not know until now that it's uh, that their ashes are to uh yeah, everyone that will be involved in building the temple it's to cleanse yes. them. That right. is so interesting. Yes. I did not know that. You know, I did hear and I didn't know if you heard about it that even the priests now we're not; they were not uh, able to be priests unless their DNA was checked, and that they were in the line of Aaron. Did you hear that? Yes, I believe that is the case. You're mm-hmm. correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. Uh, right there is amazing. So they called the priests forward. Uh, that must have been shocking to some of the people over there that didn't know maybe that they were in the lineage. Uh, that's really exciting. So, you know, they're already training the priests to, to be mm-hmm. in the choir. So we, we didn't document that, but this is mm-hmm. what I am aware of. That mm-hmm. People are being, there's a, called the uh, Jerusalem Temple Institute, it's called. Yes. Which, um, of course, there's the, the biggest piece that will go in the temple complex is the menorah itself, which is on full display outside. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful golden piece that's maybe eight, nine feet tall. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of the centerpiece in the Jewish quarter in Jerusalem. So even that in itself, there's a label that goes with it. It's prepared for the next temple. So people are beginning to think, oh, wow, you know, maybe we are getting closer to what we've heard about is going to happen. And, uh, yeah. of course, as, as believers, Christians, we can see how it all can fit into God's timepiece. Yeah, at the end time and building that third temple, you know, yes. and we and you know it's interesting. I mean, you're you're there, you're around the people there. You know, you were saying that you had actually actors that were not Christians, so uh, that, that on a lot of your productions, how are they taking this all in? Are they seeing before them that this is something that was prophesied? And they're part of it? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we're not really using actors, for instance, in, in this particular ser- series. Um, mm-hmm. We are, by the way, airing now a series called Joshua. Okay. On, um, uh, and it's, in fact, Joshua is played by the part of the two brothers who are now the spokesmen for the, pro- the program, Our Jewish Roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joshua and Caleb Colson, who we have done online pieces with them called the Bearded Bible Brothers, <clears throat> which people can go online mm-hmm. and see. Um, <clears throat> but uh, although <laughs> Joshua, in this case, is speaking in Hebrew, in, in English, not Hebrew, uh, mainly because we shot this during the COVID thing where we couldn't even go to Israel. So there were like two year period where I had to have English speaking actors. <laughs> oh, that's good. So uh, Joshua is just being plain old Joshua. He's an actor, so that worked out fine. Oh, that's great. But we're real excited about a dateline and how that can uh, stir interest and awareness that we're in the end times and that um, God's uh, timetable and time place is, is Israel, and um, it, it, we need to keep our eyes focused and continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah, amen to that. And I think what's interesting is, like you said, if we need to keep our eyes on Israel to know where we are in the timeline right. of the end of the end times and Jesus' return, which uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should ask this question, but do you believe that it's almost soon? I, you know, I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm just wondering uh, with everything going on and the temple being built, it just seems like we are getting a, closer than we think. 
Yeah, I, I, I do. I do believe that. I mean, just look at the world in general, what's happening. Mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. Let's say even America, how things are just going downhill. And mm-hmm. you just wonder. Many have thought where well, the Lord has just taken his hand off of, of America because of, of what's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't go maybe quite so far to say that, but there are there many who, who believe that. Yeah. It's spiraling downward. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I just don't know how long we can continue to spiral downward Lord. until there's an awakening in the hearts of, of people around the world that this mis- must mean something. It's spiraling. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. It's all prophetic. You read Revelation, the book of Revelation, and, mm-hmm. and you see how all these pieces are coming together and how uh, ultimately there will be a war in uh, Megiddo where we're about to shoot this next series. And um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's very humbling on my, on, on my part to to be a part of all this and to kind of document mm-hmm. things that are happening and to bring an awareness to viewers that uh, mm-hmm. wake up, folks, <laughs> um, smell the coffee. Yeah, it's time, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. And, and just to think that you're going to Megiddo and you're actually doing... Uh, you know, producing a show that you're going to be filming right there on the land. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It just blows me away. It blows yeah, me away, just, Ken. Uh, reference of Megiddo is where the Battle of Armageddon yeah. will take place. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the term Megiddo comes from, obviously, Megiddo or Megiddon. Armageddon. Armageddon. Yeah. 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 So we are. We're, 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 guys, we're just at this last part, uh, I believe, of the end of end times. And yeah. I, I just want to share with our listeners, you know, again, we need your voice. We know that things are hard. We know that our voices are being silenced at this point. We know that our opinions are being shut out, uh, but we still need to take a stand for Christ. We still na- need to take a stand and be a voice, be a light uh, to this dark world, and not to fear. The Lord says to fear not, and to let our supplications be known to the Lord and pray, you know, and He'll take that fear away. But we need to stand up in faith and do what we're called to do. And I just want to encourage every listener out there, you know, you may not have a background like Kenneth Burke. I don't have a background. In fact, I was one of the first saved in my whole entire family, which is a big family. We all have a story. We all have a testimony, but we all can be a light for Jesus, and we can all have a pulpit wherever we are, you know, and I want to encourage that. Uh, You know, getting back to the Kids of the Kingdom, um, you know, Ken, it's so needed right now, And, and I know you mentioned it before. I just want people to pray for this, you know, this, I pray for all his projects, but I think this one is one that we definitely need, you know, for our kids today. Right. Uh, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're just so confused, you know, mm-hmm. with um, what truth is. I know that's what your program is all yes. about. And kids just wonder what is truth mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, you know, again, to be able to encounter the Bible and the truth therein. It's not changed for thousands of years. Unlike truth, that we're told one thing one day and the next day, well, not necessarily the truth. You know, we've changed, mm-hmm. you know, you can change pronouns. So you're no longer a he. You can be a them. Or you can be whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, the, our whole language has changed. It, it has been Just changed. within a short period of time. It's yeah. Just, and I can't imagine how that affects your, your productions. I know that we've been affected in so many different ways, too, just by our show. I, what I see is I see the enemy. I see Satan trying to take the identity of Jesus Christ. I mean, we are, you know, his creation. We are made in his image. We are made in God's image, three parts, just like him. And if, if, and we are made male or female for a reason, you know, and if, Satan can take that away. He's actually taken away our identity of who we are in Christ. And if he could do that, then he can just steal, uh, you know, basically he's gone after everything, you know, and now our kids, and we know that. But I, I just want to, if you can encourage our listeners, and then and then I'll pray, uh, you know, how, how would you encourage, you know, with everything you've been through, even as a <coughs> child, your background, I know you've been through some ups and downs. You know, like, but how could you encourage other people to stand strong and have their pulpit in whatever it is that they're called to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would just like to encourage everybody um, with the fact that you have been created for a purpose, that uh, it, it's more than just 
getting up and going through the routine of a day and then closing out the day watching television or whatever you might do and going to bed and getting up the next morning doing the very same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. God, I'm sure, has planted some kind of a a seed in your heart, Mm -hmm. some kind of a talent that um, needs to be used for him. And and it might be nothing more than a smile in a given day to a neighbor who needs a smile. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that uh, that friend, you know, needs a word of encouragement. That's your ministry. Mm-hmm. And um, you should take it, not lightly, but seriously. Thank the Lord for this this talent you have given to me, this, this burden on my heart. And I take it from you, dear Lord, that... Uh, it can be used to to broaden your kingdom in some way. You know, you you give a smile to your neighbor. Your neighbor says, well, "Wow, you know, I hadn't felt nobody's cared about me." And I'm going to tell my husband that. So it kind of spreads <laughs> that um, God just has a way of. Again, I, I allude to the puzzle thing of <clears throat> all of us are a small piece in a puzzle that, for the most part, we think that the world's built around this one piece of puzzle, but it's mm-hmm. not. No, it's a big picture that he looks at and puts together so beautifully. He does. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, when you meet him face to face, you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I think we all want to hear that. So I'd like to just pray, Ken, for our uh, our listeners. Lord, we just thank you for this time, this moment. Lord, I pray that you would, everything that Ken has shared in his ministry, Lord, I pray that would seed the heart of others to be encouraged, to be inspired, Lord, to seek out their pulpit. Uh, We love you. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this ordained moment. We thank you for Ken Berg. And Lord, again, we give all glory to you in anything we put our hands to. In Jesus Christ, we pray. So thank you, listeners. Thank you, Ken. And till next time, big hugs. (laughs) 